like I said, daily intros. This is the intro to my channel now, guys. This is the intro to the channel. Very, very close to bringing out the notebook tonight. Very close to one of those slates. I mean, yesterday was a bad slate, but they might have been worse. I just, again, I just want to run neutral. I don't have to run good. I just have to not run off. I take campaign over PRA. Easily going to hit. Injured. Play DeAndre Ayton on DraftKings. Injured. Take the over Kavon Looney PRA. Needs one more. Massive blowout. Play Mikel Bridges on DraftKings. Three of 77 shooting. That's not no exaggeration. Check the stats. Three of 77. The injury. Oh. It's so frustrating when I hit on a low on play that no one was on. I was talking about how I really liked Bobby Portis for GPPs. How with Drew Holiday out, I thought everyone was going to flock to Middleton. Well, I thought Middleton was, you know, good cash play. I liked Portis as the pivot in tournaments. Bobby Portis, 2% goes from almost 50 fancy points. I nail that. Just doesn't matter. Eight an injury. Like, come on, man. Come on. My prize picks were looking great. Injury on prize picks, and then a massive blowout in the Warriors game. It's just, again, double in hand. A big stack of my money the last four nights with injuries every single night and rejection. Right into the incinerator. Incinerate it. Burn. Burned or crisp. Will tomorrow's 10 game slate be the slate that finally doesn't end in excruciating pain? You tell me. You tell me. All right, guys. Well, let's move on. Um, yeah, going to be another, again, night that uh, just. Absolutely sucks. Um, awful slate. And I am in so much pain. Agony. Everything. Everything hurts. Everything hurts. <sighs> Just speechless, man, right? It, it's back to the beginning of the year. We're now we're getting the BS every day. Right? It's an injury or an ejection every single day. You can't win. I can't, I'm just, I can't win with the injuries in my lineup in GPP. It's just no, it burn my money, right? Woo! All right, quickly getting over the intro. Guys, when, we, when I avoid injuries and ejections, I am pretty good at DraftKings. Uh, so if you guys are looking for more enough content, you can check my Patreon link down below. And prize picks, again. When I, uh, you know, well, I've actually been hitting really going, doing really well on prize picks, but I just keep going five or six. But then again, injury for me tonight, massive blowout. Ugh. If you're not familiar, player prop site, use the code DKDFS. It will give you a free 100% match or 100% match up to $100. That's a free $100 to play with on the site. So much pain, guys. Like, oh. Hmm. I'm just, oh, I'm so competitive. I hate losing. And I just, the stupid stuff really pisses me off. But the injuries, the ejections, come on, man. It can't keep happening, can it? All right, Detroit, Charlotte. And, and okay, this team's really pissing me off, the Pistons, with the, with the way that they're running their rotations. They're basically playing 10 guys and playing everyone like 25 minutes. So um, if you want to target Bojan and hope he shoots 100% from the field, which he's done, uh, in like three of the last six games, you can. I mean, he does have a ceiling. If he knocks down his shots, not going to do much of the peripheral stats. I mean, you would think they would want to play the young guards, killing Hayes and Jaden Ivey, like 35 minutes a game, because why not? No chance. Dusty Corey Joseph, we got to play him 25 minutes? You bet. But your young guards you're trying to develop? 
No way. Like, what are we doing here, Dwayne Casey? What are you actually doing? He should be fired for the way he's running these rotations. Literally. Like, what are you doing? What are you actually doing playing Corey Joseph 20 minutes a night? Duran started the last couple games, but as it really changes minutes, I mean, they're just playing everyone 25 minutes. So you want to target Duran at 4-1, that's fine. Uh, again, you would think Duran, Ivy, Hayes, these guys are playing 35 minutes a night. Ah, we got Dwayne Kate. Oh, these coaches in the NBA, man. Charlotte on the other side, they're running a pretty tight rotation. Main five guys should play big minutes of the game since competitive. Rogier, Oubre, Plumley, Washington, McDaniels. Rogier and Oubre, the two guys at the highest ceiling. Um, like them both, their respective price points. Plumley should play around 30 minutes. I think he's a relatively safe play. Washington, if he stays out of foul trouble, also should play mid-30s minutes. He's been a bit up and down. McDaniels, 5-1, and we've been seeing around 30 minutes from him. The price has ticked up on him a bit to the point where he's more of a secondary option, though, for me. All right, Atlanta and Orlando. So Atlanta, no DeJounte Murray, no John Collins. We'll see about Trey Young. Last game without Trey Young, they started a pretty big lineup. So they started Trent Forrest at the point with uh, Hunter, A.J. Griffin, Johnson, then Okongu with Capella out. We do have Bogdanovich back too. So um, either way, I think Bogdan Bogdanovich stands out as a really, really good play. Minutes, there's no longer a limit. 34, 36 minutes of Trey Young's out. I mean, he's going to do everything for the team. I really like Bogdanovich either way. He's going to look even better if Trey Young's out. Now, if Trey Young's out, you most likely get Trent Four starting the point. Um, you know, he's been not great. So, I mean, he's playable for value if he starts, but mm, mm. Um, AJ Griffin, Hunter, they should continue to start. Um, you know, Hunter, minutes, probably around 30. So they're both fine. Capella's back. So Kong will ship back to the bench. But uh, yeah, big news, obviously, is Trey Young. Keep an eye on that. Trey Young plays. I do like him quite a bit, assuming no limitations. On the Magic side, it's another team where like the rotation, eh, eh. basically like all their main guys are playable. There's no standout cells. Like Bancaro, Franz, Mo, Bobol, the two guards, and Anthony and Fultz, Mo Bomb, but they're all fine. Um, point per dollar, I think it's the easiest to probably get to the guards and Fultz and Anthony, but um, yeah, or Mo Wagner, so he stays out of foul trouble, got massive foul trouble last game, only played 21 minutes. Previous to that, though, 32, 36, and 31 minutes. Golden State and the Pacers, they price a lot of these Warriors up. We'll see on a back-to-back -back if they do rest anyone. Wiggins is still out, so no standouts as far as the guards go with Claypool and stuff. They're all fine tournament plays, I guess. Draymond at 6-2. Neutral play in the mid-range. Looney's price is up. I'm not really interested in him. Kaminga's price is up. Not interested in that. So, like, a lot of these guys are priced up. Maybe Golden State rests some guys, and then we can start looking to some of these younger guys. But at the moment, pretty unappealing team, even in a good matchup. For the Pacers, Al Burton shot 0 of 73 last game, um, but that should lower his ownership. Good matchup for him. I think he's a nice bounce-back candidate. Miles Turner at 7K. You know, should play low to mid-30s minutes, assuming he stays out of foul trouble. So, like Al Burton, like Turner, and this group of, like, Buddy Heald, Matherin, Nemhar, they're all fine tournament plays. No standouts there. We'll keep an eye on Naismith news. Um, but nothing else I really wanted to mention for the Pacers. Knicks and Bulls. So, big news for the Knicks. Again, still no Obi Toppin. And then uh, Jalen Brunson, not questionable. So, the Knicks have running running a really tight rotation. I've been taking advantage of this on both DraftKings and prize picks. Just been loading up on the Knicks overs and playing them in, in DFS because they're running like a Tom Thibodeau rotation from like last year, two years ago, where the starters are just playing huge minutes. So um, I like Randall, even at 8-7. Uh, he got ejected last game, went under my prize picks prop by 0.4 because of it in the third quarter. Uh, but I think he looks good. I like RJ Barrett a good amount. He played 44 minutes last game. Um, and then Brunson, if he plays, I think is a solid option too. If Brunson misses, then we can look to Emmanuel quickly, who's going to look a lot better, most likely would start. Robinson, we know the ceiling's there for him, but he's very foul prone. He fouled out at 19 minutes. Again, very up and down. Grimes, McBride, these guys are seeing rotation minutes. Grimes at 4-9 is a bit pricey, but he played 42 minutes last game. Miles McBride played 21 minutes. Um, I mean, if there's no Brunson, he should find his way into more minutes. And then Hardenstein's playing the backup five. Uh, he played a lot more last game because of Robinson foul trouble. So, um, you can take a shot in Hartenstein and hope for Robinson foul trouble. 19, 18, 26 minutes over the last three games for Hartenstein. Moving on to the Bulls. So the Bulls, Caruso probable, Io questionable. Um, DeRozan, Levine, Vooch, I think all look pretty good. I don't know if there's any standouts here, but they're all certainly in play. I think all of them are a little bit too cheap. Pat Williams, 3.8K, probably sees 25 to 30 minutes. Fair value play. 
Russo, I like assuming he starts, um, you know, should play probably close to 30 minutes at 3.6K. I think that does look pretty good. Then I'll mention Drummond, good point per minute guy. The Knicks have a bigger team, right? They usually have a traditional center out there at all times with either Robinson or Hartenstein. So Drummond at close to min price, I actually do kind of like. Um, and if something happens to Vucevic or this game blows out and you see extended minutes of Drummond, he could break the slate. So I do like him at 3-3. Sacramento and Toronto, not a ton that stands out here for Sacramento. I think Sabonis at 9-6 is fine for tournaments. He had a good game uh, in the blowout against Philadelphia, but nothing else really stands out to me. Some of these guys price up for when Fox is out, Fox is back. So outside of Sabonis, not much. On the Toronto side, they're relatively shorthanded. No OG, no Achua, no Otto. Hernan Gomez is questionable. So um, you should get pretty big bets for like Siakam, Van Fleet, Barnes, Gary Trent Jr. Gary Trent Jr. started last game at 5-7. He might be the easiest guy to get to. The only downside is he's score independent, but played 44 minutes last game. So like Gary Trent Jr., assume he starts. Um, Barnes, Van Fleet, Siakam, I think all look pretty good. I think Van Fleet probably my favorite of that group, factoring in price. Uh, but if you want to get to Siakam or Barnes, that's totally fine. My boy, Chris Boucher, uh, should see mid-20s minutes. Uh, I think he's a good tournament play. Value-wise, I mean, I don't know if there's anything that stands out here. I mean, you got Coloco, you got Thad Young, Ken Birch saw some rotation minutes, but it's mainly the, the main guys I'm looking to do for Toronto, just because they're going to play a ton. Miami and OKC, no Jimmy Butler, so I think Bam, Hero, Lowry all look pretty good. Hero and Bam probably being my two favorites, but Lowry at 5'6", relatively safe play too. Uh, Martin, Struess, that should be the starting lineup with Jimmy Butler out. Um, Struess, we know, very, very score independent as a low floor. Martin is kind of just there. Oladipo, 4-6. I mean, minutes have been hovering around 20. So unless we get news, these minutes limit's going to be bumped a little bit tough to prioritize him. And yeah, that's it for Miami on the Oklahoma City side. Uh, no JRE, no Kenneth Williams. Shea at the top of 10K, good tournament play. Nothing else that stands out, though, with a Giddy or Dort. Um, you want to take a shot in Pogoshevsky with no JRE, be my guest. Um, Baisley at the Flatman price, sure, you can take a dart throw on him. But we just know... Thunder can give a lot of guys minutes. So you just, no matter who's out, uh, they're always going to run a deep rotation. Portland and San Antonio, not a ton that stands out for me on the Portland side. I mean, Dame's been playing really well of late. So like his ceiling, my boy Nurkic, great point per minute, but the minutes are kind of hovering around 30 in competitive games. So a little bit tough to prioritize that. Simons, Grant, Hart, they both feel priced. They all feel priced about right. Winslow's 4-2. You should see mid-20s minutes in competitive game. That's a fine value play, but... Not a ton that stands out. On the Spurs side, I just tired of talking about this team too. I'm just tired of this team. I don't want to get popped tomorrow. After everything I've been through the last four days, I just, I know I'm going to get popped. All right. And that's just the last thing I need right now in my life is to get popped. The main three guys, Keldon Vassell, Trey Jones, I think all look like solid tournament plays. Keldon Johnson probably being my favorite because he's just getting a ton of shots up, but he's not making the shots. Uh, Devin Vassell, again, 7K, also should play around 30 minutes. So, fine. Zach Collins, doubtful. Yaka Pertle out. All I'm going to say here is whatever you think the starting lineup is going to be, it's going to be something different. I've been hammering that home all year long. Whatever you have guys that are like, oh, this guy's the backup. He's going to start. Now, let's dust off the guy from the end of the bench in the G League and start him. That's what's going to happen. So, literally, whatever you do, oh, Pirtle's out, Zach Collins out, full. it's going to be Charles Bassey. No, it's going to be someone from the G League, all right? But yeah, Bassey, you would think, you would think he's going to play more with Pirtle out and Zach Collins out. Full. So, good point for a guy, do have interest in him, we'll see what the starting lineup is. Sohan was on a limit. Um, I want to see if he's still on a limit. Um, if not, he could be playable value. I mean, just gross value, man. Like, it really makes me sick. Kata Bates, Diop, Richardson, McDermott, Langford, like, Roby picked up a start, played, like, 12 minutes. It really makes me sick to my stomach talking about these value plays. Uh, Cleveland and Dallas, not a ton of stands out for me on the Cleveland side. I think Mitchell... 8-9 is fine for tournaments. Garland's been playing absolutely awful, but he's playing a ton of minutes. Mobley, Allen, even with Kevin Love back, they still, they still saw pretty big minutes, but it's not really the best matchup here against Dallas. So, like, again, just secondary plays. I mean, 4.1K for Love does feel cheap, but his minutes have been kind of all over the place. If you told me right now Kevin Love was playing 22 minutes, he would be in my lineup for sure. But if he plays, like, 9 or 14 minutes, that could really hurt you. So I have interest in Love for tournaments, but 
the minutes were disappointing last game. On the Dallas side, Luka always in play. If there's enough value, it opens up. You can definitely get to Luka Doncic. Spencer Dinwiddie had like an, almost a triple-double last game playing alongside Luka. I'll let others chase him. I don't think he's a good play. Um, Hardaway Jr., I mean, you know what you're getting into with him. He should play around 30 minutes, but very up and down. It really comes down to whether or not he makes his shots. I can't tell if he's going to make a shot. So he's going to have opportunities, but he can definitely still hurt you. I don't think I can stomach anyone else. I mean, I guess Dorian Finney-Smith is playable at 4.1K. Um, Washington, Denver, a little bit tough to say right now with Washington. You got Porzingis, who I played last slate, injured, of course. Beal's questionable, Porzingis questionable, Monte Morris questionable. If they are all out, then like Kuzma is going to run the offense. He would look decent at 9K. Um, Barton, Goodwin, Denny would play big minutes. They would all look pretty good. You would get Gafford most likely starting. Uh, as long as he stays out of foul trouble, he would be a great value. But if Morris, Beal, and Porzingis are all in, I don't know if there's anything that stands out to me with a lot of these guys priced up from when they were shorthanded. On the Denver side, I mean, Jokic, whoever starts in the center for Washington, Jokic should be able to feast. So he looks good at the top. Again, just comes down to, do you feel comfortable with enough value to get Jokic in there? The rest are all kind of secondary plays. Murray, Gordon, Bruce Brown, Bones Highland, KCP. They're all fine. Like, I'm not really going to prioritize any of these guys. It's a good matchup. If you feel really good about one of them, you can play them. But, yeah, there's no standouts there. And finally, Minnesota and the Clippers. So, no cat. You got D'Lo, questionable. Can't wait to lose more money on Anthony Edwards. I mean, this guy is just so up and down, man. Like, he's just there's no consistency. Oh, you think, oh, like yeah, three straight good games with the cat out? No. Three of 14 shooting. Six is like, come on. Come on, man. Come on. But uh, yeah, if De- D'Angelo Russell's out first, I think Jalen Noel would be the best play of the slate. Assuming he would start. Good point per minute guy that would probably play 30 plus minutes. He would look amazing. Um, Anthony Edwards and Gobert would look a little bit better if D'Lo's out. Gobert should play mid 30s minutes if he stays out of foul trouble. And then these secondary options start looking better with like uh, Kyle Anderson has been playing well. McDaniels, the 4K, has been playing really bad, but like he's $4,000. And then yeah, if D'Lo's out and Noel starts. I still don't think I can get to anyone like Rivers or Forbes. Oh, oh. Stomach is churning just thinking about Austin Rivers or playing, playing Austin Rivers or Bryn Forbes. Ooh. Wow, were they ever awful NBA players. Um, Nas Reed's 4-2. Um, he'll play the back of five. Uh, kind of play a bit alongside Gobert. Solid tournament play. If D'Lo's in, then I think like Ant, Gobert, D'Lo all look pretty good. Probably Gobert would be my favorite of the, the big three there. And then, you know, the value guys would all be fine, but there'd be no standouts. And finally, the Clippers. So, why Leonard still get me on limit? Paul George no longer on a limit. Paul George 9-5, though. Yeah, that feels priced about right. Kawhi finally had a really big game. He looked like his old self, but still going to be capped at around 30 minutes. I think he's still playable, though, at a sub-7K price point. The rest of the team, eh, Reggie Walls put the point guard duty. Zubach has been playing bad of late. Morris will get the minutes, but he feels priced about right. I think my next favorite play probably would be Batum. But like his price levels come up two to four eight, so it's like, eh, eh, not a ton else that stands out for me on the Clippers. So, hey guys, that's gonna wrap it up. Again, one slate is all I ask. One slate that doesn't end in excruciating pain, man. I just, it's not too much to ask for, right? We're right back to the beginning of the year with the injuries and the ejections every night. Come on, gotta stop it. So I can stop burning my money with injuries. Oh. But appreciate you guys as always. Hopefully our luck turns around tomorrow and I'll see you in the next video.